The ethics of hacking falls on a spectrum measured in the color of hats. Uh, the typical way to state you are a hacker for bad is to say you are a black hat. A hacker for good, white hat. And then if you fall somewhere in the middle, great. Now this came from the tradition of giving cowboy villains black hats and the heroic ones white hats, but now it's used for hacking, not hatting. I don't know. Anyways, hi most amazing fam, my name is Abby and newsflash, anyone can be hacked. Many companies, many people, many accounts, just all out there. Social engineering, big way to do it. But anyways, a lot of the time people won't even know that they're compromised. So today, for today's video, I will be telling you 9 true scary hacker stories and one made up that I found on no sleep. So try to keep your mind sharp. Anyways, all of these will make up today's top 10 scary hacker stories. At number 10, we have man in the monitor. So last year, a couple was sleeping soundly when a beeping noise woke them up. At that point, Ellen and Nathan Rigney heard a stranger's voice coming through the baby monitor in their room. It was linked to a nest camera in their baby's room upstairs. They turned on their lights and a voice came through their nest camera in their room telling them to turn the lights back off. At that point, Ellen said that the voice said, I'm going to kidnap your baby, I'm in your baby's room. And so obviously they were scared for their child and Nathan ran upstairs but no one was in his son's room. The baby was just sound asleep. And at this point, they suspected that their nest system was hacked. This is obviously supposed to be a system that gives them security and let them keep watch of their child, but it was then compromised. And also, this isn't the only family to have this issue. Ever since more Wi-Fi enabled baby monitors have come out, more issues like this have arisen. Traditional baby monitors have a limited range and work more like a walkie talkie, but if people use Wi-Fi, they can keep tabs on their baby from further away. But as we can see in this story, other people can keep tabs from further away as well. So be mindful of that. Let's move on to number nine, attackers causing physical harm. Now back in 2008, a group of people decided to embed messages left on a forum for epileptics with flashing images intending to trigger them. They also added JavaScript to some posts that would redirect the site visitor to a page with more complex series of images that was designed to affect epileptics that were either photosensitive or pattern sensitive. Now this led to an unknown number of people getting migraines or seizures after visiting this site. And now the site received a handful of reports of the matter to them, but they don't know how many people exactly were affected. Now the nonprofit Epilepsy Foundation that runs the site shut it down to increase security before bringing it back up, but members of the forum claimed they found a message board on 7chan planning the attack. And so it's scary to think how innocent people can be physically harmed by a computer or an algorithm, nonetheless that people hacking would want to hurt innocent people that were just going to a forum for some advice. Let's move on to number 8, a teen hacked NASA. So yes, that is true. Back in 1999, Jonathan James was just 15 years old when he hacked into NASA's computers. First, in late June, he got into 13 computers at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Once he was in, he downloaded software and stole data, among other things, which led to a three-week shutdown of some of the computers. Then, from August to October, he got into computers used by the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. The Justice Department said he intercepted more than 3,300 messages and at least 19 users names and passwords. Just, just a ton. All of this that he did racked up more than $40,000 in fees, damages, and paying people to restore the information. Now Jonathan's lawyer said that the ease in which Jonathan was able to get into the government computer showed that there was a security problem, and yeah, isn't that the truth? On to number 7, hotel room hack. Back in 2012, Janet Wolf's hotel room was robbed, but there was no evidence of forced entry. When hotel management checked the records of the doors, there weren't any entries showing that any hotel staff had opened that door. And then what had happened most likely was the electric lock for the hotel room had been hacked. But you might be thinking, how? It's the card. But we've seen it in spy movies, you plug in a wire connected to some fancy hacking hardware and software and bam, you're in. But nowadays that technology isn't just sci-fi fantasy, it's real. At a Black Hat security conference earlier in the year, a software developer named Cody Brocious publicly demonstrated a security flaw in keycard locks. Specifically, Onity keycard locks, the same ones used at Wolf's Hotel when she was staying there. On stage, Cody plugged in a small device he built with less than $50 in parts into the port at the bottom of the keycard lock. It read the digital key that provides access to the opening mechanism of the lock and it opened instantly. So because electronics are cool but can be hacked, use the deadbolt on your hotel door when you're going to a hotel room. That way when you're inside, no one can just burst into your room because that's scary. We don't want that. 
On to number 6, hacked a car? Now in this instance the person being hacked knew it was going to happen. Andy Greenberg at Wired let two hackers, Charlie Miller and Chris Valasek, take control of his Jeep Cherokee wirelessly. From 10 miles away, the pair used their code to send commands through the Jeep's entertainment system, so it was able to access dashboard functions, steering, brakes and transmission. So even though in this instance they were only 10 miles away, the software they were using could let a hacker go across the country, cause it's the internet. Because that's what happens when cars go on the internet. It's pretty cool, but it leads to these vulnerabilities. So just like with Greenberg, they had an instance where they cut his brakes when he was trying to park in a parking lot, and that led to his car being in a ditch. And yeah, these are the friendly hackers that are showing us what they can do. On to number five, hack to toaster. So Andrew McGill at The Atlantic set up a honeypot situation with a small server from Amazon. He set it up as bait for hackers disguised as a toaster and between 1.12pm and 11.59pm over 300 different IP addresses tried to attack this toaster. Now what they were probably trying to do is add it to a botnet even though it's just a toaster. If you are unfamiliar, a botnet is a system of internet connected devices running one or more bots that can be used in a number of different attacks. If your wireless toaster, webcam or DVR is compromised, then an attacker can use the device and its connection to the internet for their own attacks. And that's just like this next one in our next number. At number 4, DVRs took down the internet. So by using botnet, as we described, a hacker took down the domain name service provider of many websites. The botnet waged a distributed denial of service attack or a DDoS that spammed the provider with more requests than it could handle. Basically think of you're at the DMV and then just everyone's in the room at the same time. It just nothing happens. Now this led in this instance to Reddit, Twitter, Spotify and the New York Times among other sites to be out of service for hours. And this wasn't by using other computers that, that are like super intense to hack in, but using mainly webcams and DVRs as the bot hosts. So you can do a lot and your DVR could have just been shut down hacking Twitter for someone else. Okay, number three, we have personal issues. Now, someone said their friend was a hacker and told them a story they had once, so I'm gonna tell that to you. It's a long story, but I will sum it up. Basically, this guy started hacking at a young age, and by the age of 16, he had hacked into his high school bully's computer. He sent dating message notifications to his bully while his bully's girlfriend was over to ruin their relationship, and then put more incriminating downloads on his computer for his parents to find. And then after that he got more hooked with hacking, acting more as a white hat until he had the scariest experience. Someone found out where he was and was using all of his old hacking experiences against him, saying they knew everything he had ever done. They knew all of the people that he had hacked and what happened to them and were using the information to fuel a little game. He ended up having to go to a secondary location outside of his home while on the phone with his attacker and got arrested after getting into a face to face conflict with his attacker. He got out of arrest since witnesses were able to tell authorities authorities that the hacker was at fault, and he did stop hacking after that though. But who was this hacker that knew everything about him in the end? It was his girlfriend. At number 2 we have email takeover. So hacking can be a targeted attack too, not just for bots. A woman told her story about a hacker talking to past male acquaintances and sending them inappropriate photographs. This went on for a while without her noticing it until a friend sent her an email saying he thinks her account had been hacked. That morning someone had sent out a mass email from her account with pictures, personal correspondences and her password with an invitation for everyone to access her account. It was sent out to her friends and family and that just left her devastated. And the reason for all this? The girlfriend of one of her guy friends thought that she and him were more than friends, so she, the girlfriend, got one of her friends to hack into her email. Just out of suspicion. At number 1 we have patient records held hostage. Now, if a hacker gets a hold of something important to a person, they could encrypt it and hold it for ransom. And that's what one hacker did to a hospital. In 2016, the Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center's computer system was taken over and encrypted by hackers. They demanded $3.6 million in Bitcoin for the key to the encryption. Now, the doctors and nurses for the time being switched to communicating by fax or in person because that's safe, and they were waiting for a choice to be made. They ended up paying $17,000 in Bitcoin for the records back just because there was no way to break the key or get it back, but two years later the hackers behind it were charged. 
And that is the top 10 scary hacker stories today. And drone roll, please, for the made up story. It was number three personal issues. That is actually a summary of the no sleep story why I stopped hacking for good by user Menmaro. It will be linked below along with the other sources used in today's video. Now, let me know down below if you have been hacked. And while you're down there, leave a like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when a new video goes up. Thanks for watching. I've been your host, Abby. And until next time, use different passwords for everything. Don't be hacked. Yeah.